JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week November the 2nd until November the 6th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a relatively busy week ahead of us with the US elections on Tuesday taking the center, the center stage. We also have three central banks deciding on interest rates and those are the RBA, the Bank of England and the FOMC. While on Friday we get the official uh, US employment report for October. So let's begin with uh, Monday. Today is a relatively light day. We only get the final manufacturing PMIs for October from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, as well as the US ISM manufacturing index uh, for the same month. As usual, the final market uh, PMIs are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates, while the ISM index is expected to have increased to 55.8 from 55.4. Now on Tuesday, uh, we have the 59th US presidential election with around 92 million people already casting their ballot. According to opinion polls, Joe Biden is leading uh, incumbent President Donald Trump by nearly 10 percentage points, but the contest is much tighter in battleground states that could decide the outcome. In our view, given that Biden has called for corporate tax increases, his election could prove somewhat negative for US equities, but this may not be true for stocks in the rest of the world, as he may adopt uh, a softer stance on international trade than Trump. In the FX world, a Biden victory may result in a slide in the US dollar, as Biden's fiscal agenda is looser than Trump's uh, agenda. The yen and other safe havens could also slide on expectations of a better handling of international trade relations, while the commodity-linked uh, Aussie and QE could strengthen. Now, in case we get an extended period of uncertainty due to either delays in announcing a winner or even a contested uh, election, remember that Trump said that he may not accept uh, defeat as uh, mail-in balloting could lead to a voter fraud, and if this happens, uh, risk assets around the globe may suffer, uh, may suffer as investors uh, seek shelter in safe havens until we have a clear, a clear outcome. Having said all that, the market reaction may also depend on which party will gain majority in, uh, in the US Congress. Whoever gets elected, a failure of his party to take full control of the Congress may result in a more modest market uh, reaction as he may not be able to push through with his, with his agenda. For example, if Biden is elected but fails to flip the Senate, stock markets may not slide that much on expectations that, that uh, the Republicans may veto his decision of increasing corporate taxes. Republicans may also oppose his spending agenda, which means a softer slide in, uh, in the dollar than otherwise. Now, earlier in the day, during the Asian morning uh, Tuesday, uh, we have an RBA monetary policy decision. At its previous meeting, this bank kept monetary policy settings unchanged, disappointing those looking for further easing after Deputy Governor Guy Debel flagged the prospect. Having said that, though, a few weeks ago, RBA Governor uh, Philip Lowe said that uh, more stimulus is possible with the options including bond buying and a small rate cut. On top of that, the minutes of the latest RBA gathering revealed that officials discussed cutting rates and buying longer dated debt, which suggests that other members besides uh, Governor Lowe and Debel share the same view. 
according to the ASX uh, 30 day interbank cash rates futures yield curve, there is a 74% probability for interest rates to be cut to zero at this gathering. Market chatter suggests that rates could be cut to 0.10%, uh, a move that is more than fully priced in. Thus, a rate cut by itself is unlikely to prove a major market move. We believe that investors will focus on whether officials remain willing to do more in order to support their economy. If so, the odds is likely to come under selling interest. The opposite may be true if policymakers signal that this was a, a one and done uh, move. Now on Wednesday, on Wednesday, Asian trading, New Zealand's employment report and Australia's retail sales, both for the third quarter are coming out. New Zealand's unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 5.4% from 4%, while the net change in employment is, is expected to show that the economy has lost 0.8% jobs after losing 0.4% in the second quarter. The labor cost index is expected to have slowed to 1.5% year over year from 1.8%. Australia's retail sales are expected to have rebounded 6% quarter over quarter after falling 3.4%. Later in the day, we have the final services and composite PMIs from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, but as it is the case most of the times, they are expected to confirm their initial print. The US ISM non-manufacturing index is also due to be released and the forecast points to a small decline to 57.5 from 57.8. Now on Thursday, we have two more central banks deciding on monetary policy and those are the Bank of England and the FOMC. Getting the ball uh, rolling with the Bank of England at their latest gathering, policymakers of this bank noted that they are exploring how a negative bank rate could be implemented effectively, something that increased speculation over the adoption of sub-zero rates at one of the bank's upcoming gatherings. That said, Deputy Governor uh, Dave Ramsden recently said that he and his colleagues are not uh, about to use uh, uh, negative interest rates immediately, which combined with the relative improvement in the nation's CPIs may allow Bank of England officials to hold their hands off uh, the cut button at this uh, gathering. There are, however, expectations that they will increase their QE program by £100 billion. Pounds. As uh, for the pound, given that uh, such a move is already expected, I mean, in the increase in uh, QE, we don't believe that uh, this would prove determinant with regards to the currency's forthcoming direction. We believe that the pound is likely to stay mostly linked to developments surrounding the Brexit landscape. Negotiations over a post-Brexit trade accord between the, EU, the UK and the EU continued last week, with EU chief negotiator Michel Barnier saying that the two sides are working hard to reach consensus. With all, that, with all that in mind, anything suggesting that a deal could be found in the next few weeks may prove uh, supportive, for, supportive for the pound, while signs that the gap uh, is not narrowing uh, may result in weakness in, in, uh, in the currency. Now, passing the ball to the FOMC. At its most recent meeting, the committee kept its policy unchanged, but changed the, its inflation language, noting that they will aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time, so that inflation averages 2% over time. With regards to the new dot plot, it showed that the interest rates are likely to stay at present levels at least through 2023. That said, looking at the details, we see that one member was in favor of a hike in 2022, and foresaw so rates higher in 2023. Now, combined with the inflation forecast of 2023, which is at 2%, this shows that some members may not be willing to tolerate inflation above target for long, as uh, pointed in the decision statement. So with that in mind, and also taking into account that the US economy continues to uh, relatively improve despite the spike in coronavirus infections. We believe that policymakers can afford staying sidelined at this uh, gathering. Thus, investors may scan the statement for clues and hints as to how officials are likely to proceed in the months to come. If officials hint that there are, there are high chances for further easing at the December gathering, the US dollar is likely to slip while it could gain somewhat in the absence of such uh, warning. In any case, we believe that um, 
the dollar's uh, broader path will still be affected by the election outcome and any post FOMC reaction will just be a noise within the perhaps already decided trend. Now, finally, on Friday, the main events are likely to be the US and Canadian employment reports for October. Kicking off with the US data, non farm payrolls are expected to have increased by 600,000, uh, less than September 661,000, but still a very good number consistent with further improvement in the labor market. The unemployment rate is forecast to have declined to 7.6% from 7.9% while average hourly earnings are anticipated to have slowed somewhat to 4.6% year over year from 4.7%. In our view, a decent report may increase the chances for uh, Fed officials uh, standing pad at uh, the December meeting as well, as it would signal that uh, the already adopted stimulative measures are having the desired effect on the US economy. As for Canada's report, the unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 9%, why the net change in employment is forecast to reveal a 7.5 thousand job loss after the 378.2 thousand gain in September. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. Now, if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice uh, day. JFT, just fair and direct.